Hey, Laura. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm processing. Uh, no, no. My head is just... Over the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about how the podcast is rolling out and shaping up as we're finding our voices, as we're your, I'll, it's not me, it's you, are going through all of these afternoons that we sat in your studio, right? And gone through all these different episodes, trying to piece together the conversations that we've had. And we've gone from talking about just starting to the overwhelm of starting to perfectionism. Mm -hmm. So one thing I've been thinking about as we're talking is about how, how to spend time on things that light you up, how to surround yourself with things that bring you energy and excitement and happiness. And so thinking about, <laughs> you know, the idea that what you surround yourself with, the people, the things, the information, mm -hmm. the practices are ultimately what influences how you experience your world, your days. Mm -hmm. So thinking about the books we read, the music we listen to and get excited about, the small little practices that help us keep that, keep going forward, moving forward and being positive and shifting and reframing our perspective. I think they all play a role in our ability to keep showing up and doing good work. So one thing we often do in our, our morning talks is talk about things that we're reading or listening to. Mm -hmm. So how about you go first? What's one thing that you're listening to or reading? So I'm going to start with the easiest thing because I'm enjoying it so much. I'm listening to Hail Mary by Andy Weir. He, he did The Martian. Oh, okay. Hail Mary. Project, Project Hail Mary. Oh, I said it wrong. Oh, no. We're going to have to restart the whole podcast. Nope. It's called Project Hail Mary. The project's printed really, really small on the cover. It's Project and then Hail Mary. Got it. It's the name of the ship and the name of like the, the mission is Project. It's Project Hail Mary. Like we're, we are trying to save the earth. And I've had, I've, I've already listened to it. And that, that, so that's what I was listening to last night when you were coming and sitting down and waiting for the canning to get done. Oh, sure. And so, like, I was, like, smiling and, like, giggling, like, to myself with, like, my AirPods in, <laughs> just because I was listening to that book. And it's about a high, a middle, middle school science teacher who finds himself with kind of short-term amnesia on a spaceship in a different solar system <laughs> trying to save the world from space algae. So I've been listening to that for the last few days with the intention of – is this something our kids would like to listen to? Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed me listening to it last night, but you're probably like, what is he, like, what is he doing with his AirPods in probably? And I was like, I'm listening to this book and it, I love it. It's so good. I mean, hot take. I think it's better than The Martian. And I love Whoa, I love I was that. gonna say you love like, the margin. Uh, Martian. Margin? <laughs> the margin. I don't like margin. Martian. I don't like margarine. Um I read The Martian. And then I listened to The Martian, and then I went and saw the movie The Martian. All great. Uh, obviously, the the book's better than the movie, right? Come on, people. Matt Damon, you're the best, though. It was good. I think it was a good adaptation for the screen. So I've been listening to that, and it's fun, and and it's technical, and all that stuff. So that's right away, that's what I got. Thoughts? What are you, are you looking at me kind of funny? Like You're like, what is going on? <laughs> Why are you so excited about this book? You should listen no, to it. It's good. No, I, I'm not. I don't think you should. I'm not thinking you shouldn't listen to the book. I just had no idea that you were listening to that. Yeah. You've been listening and toggling between five different perfection, how to begin, goal setting. Oh, there's more Sort books. of books and things like that. That's my fun book, though, for like on my walks. and. I like that, though. Yeah. Sometimes I think we get too into the the uh, kind of nonfiction sort of books. I do really hard. Uh, most of the books, <laughs> most of the really books hard. I have are guitar building, guitar repair, making, design, uh, and then nonfiction, like like John Green's The Anthropocene Reviewed, which uh, 
Michael Bungay Stainer mentions the Anthrop- Anthropocene Reviewed in How to Begin. That's another book I read over the last few weeks. I kind of feel like we need to take your corkboard and put all the books and how they're tied to each other on it. Yeah. That's, like, you know, like a no, NYPD Blue or like no. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. Like- <laughs> Let's more Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. And yeah, I have a like a four. That's like a four by six cork board that's sitting behind Laura in my studio. Okay. I mean, I have a whole- I got you this cork board. Yeah, from the- the, the From the, the old Pomida in the, town. The mega store that like, the box store that shut down way back when. Oh, yeah. yeah. My sister and I had to uh, get- a uh, guy to bring it in his truck because we were going to bring it in the car, <laughs> each holding a hand on each side of it because we only live about a mile away. This but, is a mile. Like, you know, we thought, oh, we'll just put it on top of the car and we can each hold a hand and drive. And somebody put it in their truck and brought it over. That was nice of them. Small town, Wisconsin. You got it. <laughs> so I okay. have a whole list of books that I could go through, but. I just asked you for one. I know. We'll, we'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> what, have you, what have you been reading or listening to? Uh, so. One book right now that I've been reading and I've been taking a little time every morning is a book called Energy Speaks by Lee Harris. And I am loving it. Absolutely loving it. So every morning I read a chapter or about half a chapter just to work work my way through it. Where'd you hear about that book? Um, well. Our new friend. Okay. <laughs> I was like, Keith is making this motion with his hands. I'm like, I was going to say our friend Karen. I, I know. I just want to make sure you like. <laughs> yeah. And and so it's uh, it's really good. It's resonating with me. It's making me feel really excited and empowered to make changes that I know make a lot of sense for me personally and to try and leverage my energy and try and open myself up to what is possible in the universe. And so for me it resonates. It it aligns a lot with who I am and who I always have been. And so it really does help me reset myself and help put in in place some good habits and mindfulness activities that really help center me and make me feel positive. So I'm enjoying that. You you brought that book up and you said that it's like opening up possibility, right? Or or what did you say? And so that's going to lead me into another book I'm listening to, but a little slower, but also it's more kind of nonfiction, right? (laughs) It says, you know, which is, it's, it's, it's like personal growth, right? And, 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 and things like that, which is a, a lot more like my wheelhouse or tends to be what I gravitate towards in, in a lot of the books that we mentioned in the last second to last, the second episode, right? Where, where we're talking about Brene Brown and Simon Sinek and Stephen Pressfield and Seth Godin. And there's another one. Um, so I, I tend to gravitate towards, those type of self-improvement books, right? Or whatever. But in the same vein as you said, like opening up the possibility, another a recommendation I got from the Purple Space community that I, that I heard about before from Seth Godin that he 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 mentions it several times was The Art of Possibility. Like this, this it, I, I connect with it so much and I'm like, I can't believe I haven't listened to it yet. But what's so interesting is that it's, a, it's Rosamund Stone Zander and Benjamin Zander, the couple. And Ben Zander is a conductor of an orchestra or a symphony. So I think I mentioned it to you before. Right. And so he's talking about like Wagner and and, and, and all these, you know, a few composers and like using some of the music and some of his his things. But the the whole title, just just the title itself, The Art of Possibility. And and I'm not all the way through the book. I'm taking it kind of slow because I have several things I've been ingesting. But I think that's what grab makes it like it, it's what pulls me towards a book like Energy Speaks or How to Begin or like we talked about before Effect Perfection is it's like propping me up to be like able to believe yes there's possibility go and do <laughs> you know so I I thought it was really interesting so that just popped in my head. I, I kind of forgot about because I haven't listened to it for like a week but anyway I you go ahead <laughs> what, do, what do you got do you have another book or another something you've been listening to or yeah, the other. So um, this one is uh, fiction. It's called A Death in Door County by Annalise Ryan. Our Door County? Yes. Really? Yeah, it's Door County, Wisconsin. Okay. And it's on the opposite side of the state. Right. N- north of Green Bay. Yeah. And um, it's a book that I picked up in a really cute bookstore out in Washington when I was visiting my sister in Port Townsend. 
right? Oh. I know. I thought that was really neat. That's hilarious. Yeah. So I was, we were shopping one day in Port Townsend and there's a cute little bookstore and we walked in and we were looking around and it was, you know, how I don't know, is it facing the book when it's just the cover is facing out instead of the spine? Yeah. Is that what facing? Yeah. They're kind of like highlighting it, right? Yeah. 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 And Jenny and I both looked at it and we thought. A death in Door County? Is this Door County, Wisconsin? And I picked it up and looked. I'm like, oh my goodness, it is. I'm like, I'm buying this. Oh, jeez. But it's not a, m- well. <laughs> it better be a murder mystery. Come on. It's a murder mystery, but it is like a mythical murder mystery. So it's, okay. I, I won't do a spoiler alert. It's not like there's a murder on the loose that I think. Are you still reading it? I am. Okay. I'm only about halfway in, so I okay. really have no idea well, who, the, who the murderer is. <laughs> um, but, but so far it's really, it's really, really good. Um, my plan is to bring it with us when we go on our anniversary vacation. Maybe I can finish it. But Because we're going. We're going towards Door County. Yeah. We're going to be so, in Green Bay. So describe to people what Door County, like when you say Door County to a Wisconsinite, they know what we're talking about, but. Oh my goodness. Okay. So Door County. So it's a county. It is, uh, like if you have. If you do your hand, like hand, you like show, a mitten. like a mitten, like Wisconsin, right? Yep. And so it's like your pinky finger. If you separate it from the rest of your fingers, that is Door County. Green Bay is in between your ring finger and your pinky. And then Door County is your pinky, except. So, peninsula that goes into Lake Michigan. Thank you. The northeast side of Wisconsin. Yes. Thank you for being. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what is Door County known for and as is what I meant. They're really known as, I would say, uh. A uh, tourist destination full of quaint little towns uh, for fish boils and wineries. They're known for their cherries, like tart cherries, phenomenal cherry pie, dried cherries. It's I I love I love Door County. It's one of those the leaves this time of year begin to change, and it's yeah. just beautiful because you have the bay on one side, you have Lake Michigan on the other side, and you can drive up one side and down the other. But I'm excited. I'm going to make Keith take me to a place called um, L. Johnson's in Sister Bay. This is the first I've heard of this. No. <laughs> what? I haven't been there, have I? No. Yes, you were. We were there last year. Is this the place with the goat Yeah, the roofs? Place, so- Not goat roofs. Grass roofs <laughs> with goats <laughs> on them. <laughs> okay. We yeah. played bags. We did. Okay. Yeah. So they have these buildings that have grass on the roofs, and then they have goats to eat the grass because it's a Scandinavian kind of restaurant. It- but last time I got, uh, gosh darn it, now I can't remember. It's called Thor's Hammer. Yes, Thor's Hammer. It was a shot of Aquavit. <clears throat> just clear your throat. Sorry, I, I got the rasp going. It just, was Just thinking about it got your throat raspy. <laughs> it did. It was a shot of Aquavit, and then the chaser was pickled herring. It was fantastic. It was so good. No. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I'll, I will so, and would never try that. It is, it was so delicious. It was so tasty. So I have on my anniversary weekend uh, bucket list. Is it a bucket list or is it? It's a, a wish list. Wish maybe. list. There we go. I've already done it once. So then it's not on your bucket list. It can list be anymore. the 16th anniversary bucket list, but ho- yes. hopefully there's more. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I agree. I agree. Oh, good. No. So yes. <laughs> so I'm excited. I want to do that. And there's some fun little wineries I'd like to go to. and. I wouldn't mind getting some pie and pie. going to Titletown Brewery and, you know, doing all the stuff. Yeah. Get you to a Packer game. Mm-hmm. Going oh to the my. Super Bowl, Keith. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> you know it's true. Oh, uh, you know, let's hope so. But, you know, cautiously optimistic. I'll take it. So that was your book, your fiction book. Yes. I should have maybe been thinking of another book. Is that how we're doing? Is that what we're doing? No, let's do, let's move to music. I want to know what's one new album or artist that you've been listening to that you're really excited about. Uh, new music is John Batiste, his new record, World Music Radio. Oh, I love it. It's so good. I love him so much. He is so good and got the, got the vinyl and obviously can, you know, listen online to the album and what i love is when music is a little challenging at first it's i mean it's so new and 
it's so funny to me that new music can be a challenge to me still when part of me wants to say it like to myself, man, you know better. Don't, don't prejudge, just go in and just witness it. Just accept it. Let it, let it come at you. And, and I did, I did that, but I still had these feelings of like, what am I hearing? Like, what is this? And, oh, this is different. And it's so funny that my reaction to something different, even when it's music is sometimes, oh, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> What? Oh, you know, and it, and it just, it, it, it brings up the same thoughts again of like how much we love repetition and pattern. And so, and then like, you know, in, in pop music and it's not all very poppy. That's what I love about him is that some of it's jazz, some of it's free form, some of it's classical and hence world music radio. Like there's, there's, you can hear themes from around the world. And like one of them, I'm like, I think I said to you, I'm like, doesn't this sound and kind of feel like it's a small world i would rather listen to this on it's a small world ride than the it's a small world music like i, I don't know if i specifically said that to you but i was like doesn't this sound like it could be on a, it's a small <laughs> world and so my point is it felt a little challenging at first but after the second listen i'm like oh i get you know it's kind of a concept album a little bit and i think I've been playing it a lot around the house, obviously, and I'm making you listen to it. So I'm um, I'm loving it. It's good. It's it's worth a few listens or a buy if if you're into it. So that's that's my 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 number one pick right now of music. I'll, I'll I'm not sure if I have any more, but I'll think. The one that I'm really digging, and you introduced me to this artist, is LP. Mm. And so I really am loving LP's uh, new album, Love Lines. So it hasn't all come out yet. There's only four of the songs on it out of 12. It'll be released on September 29th. So oh, did I'm, you look that up? Or, oh, it's on I, Apple it, Music. You can say? see at the very bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. So I am so excited because it's one of those, you know, you know, when you're introduced to an artist and then all of a sudden you start hearing or seeing them everywhere. Yeah. So are you seeing them everywhere? Well, no, but I mean, I when I get in the car in the morning, um, I often have the current on because yeah. I'm taking child one to school. And so often I'll hear LP on there, which is pretty exciting. But then I was so <laughs> this on Friday night, we were just hanging out and child one wanted to uh, talk a little bit about music. And he came in and, and was like, OK, so top 20 um, bands. bands. Yeah go because i think he's trying to learn different types of music and different yeah like what to listen to and so he knows one of my all-time favorites is green day i grew up with them i love them yeah yeah <laughs> and so he's been listening to green day which is super exciting and he knows some of the deep cuts now so anyway i think he's finding some of the albums that we like you didn't even get oh. exposed to because we had had him and they were being released in like <laughs> the late aughts like yeah. early teens and it's like we weren't we didn't have time to find new music then oh, it was just a fog i'm <laughs> yeah. so tired and so i, I was kind of being a I, young mom i mean and i'm not as as big a, a green day fan as you growing up but you know you you know when the hits come out usually but i also got away from listening to radio but like his he was scrolling through like the the albums like on the Apple TV I was like I have no idea what any of these albums are like there was like from from like after 2004 like because that's like when uh the the one that we went and saw them on tour right American after Idiot. American Idiot came out and then from like there until now now I, I'm like I don't know any of these years since like, Dookie was released I'm like, I don't know. Oh, thirty years yeah. Oof. There's albums before that too. People are like, I know that. Some people are like, but that was kind of like their. Did, 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 yeah, like we're in the we're in the flyover states. Come on, we had to wait for things to come on the radio. Yeah, we did. So uh, anyway, I let uh, I want you to keep talking. But like you said, when he when he asked us top twenty bands and then give me your top three, I think I've been waiting my whole life for my kid to ask me that. I think you're right. I'm like, I'm like, I was just like, I was like, I was so happy. I'm like, this is so hard and I'm so happy. Let's go. And, and it doesn't have to be perfect list. Like, I'm just going to try to think. I'm like, and then I was put on the spot and I'm like, I'm having a hard time of thinking of, because <laughs> there's so many. Anyway, you keep. Yeah. Keep. <laughs> no. So, so the, the seeing LP everywhere mm. was then I was thinking, oh my goodness, we haven't taken him to like a true concert. Yeah. Right. So child one, his first concert. Or Child Two, his first concert was Metallica. Yeah, yeah, he got he got to go because he was interested in yep. 
And child one wasn't that interested. So we went on a yeah. ghost tour. Pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> but in San Francisco, in San by the Francisco, way, took super child cool. two to see the symphony and Metallica two in San Francisco. It was epic. He may have fallen asleep a little bit. Oh, we got great pictures. I got so pictures, cute. but he had proper hearing protection. Uh, we were, I think, in the last row almost too. But it was it was so worth it. Anyway, keep going. I keep interrupting. No, no, no. So, so that is why. So I was looking at what artists are coming to our area, and so I noticed that LP is going to be in our area in November, and I was like, "What?" But the I, I am too old to do standing, like, to do, like, floor. I can't do floor tickets anymore. But what do you mean? Without it's, seats. But they're not, like, going to, like, there's not, like, a mosh pit at that show. I don't know, man. You're too old for that? Really? Uh-oh. I feel too old to be on the floor. There's floor tickets available? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's lots of floor tickets available. We went and saw Glenn Hansard there, I think. At the Palace? Yeah. It was pretty mm. open. That one, where you and I went, we, right? Isn't that where we went to the one the one show? I have a really bad memory of the places we've been. The only place that I could probably name is the casino in Green Bay oh. because it was in the parking lot, right? With Elvis, pretty much. With yeah, Elvis like Castello? we had to wait outside in the parking lot. That was lot. Elvis Castello and Alan Toussaint. That was yeah, yeah. amazing. Oh, that was, and we met we met Alan Toussaint yeah, we did. after the show. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Gosh, we're so fortunate to meet him. He's he's amazing. such a nice person too, and amazing. What a what a silky, buttery voice, mm. and he could tickle those keys, mm-hmm. right? Oh my gosh! Gosh! Oh, getting goosebumps thinking about him. Yeah. He was he was he was very generous. Very okay. You were looking at concerts. I was looking at concerts. Yes, and so I noticed that LP was going to be having a concert, and so it's kind of one of those once you start recognizing and hearing somebody. Then you start tuning in. It's like when you hear a word for the first time, and then you hear it everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that that's what I've been uh, digging. So I've been listening to it on the way to work, listening to it at work. I've been listening to it while I'm doing dishes, while I'm cleaning, while I'm working, um, while I'm journaling. Um, so I pretty much know all the words. If anyone hasn't discovered LP yet, look it up. I love the song Golden. No. It's my favorite. It's his- so I'm just looking up like the bio, right? Sure. And it's not a band. Like they refer, they say born Laura Pergolizzi. Yep. LP, right? So right. It, LP is an artist. She is not an a artist, band. right? Not yep. a band, right? Yep. So I just want to be clear about that. I, I, I just, I randomly heard it one night coming home from my parents after hanging out with my parents and my, and my cousin who was visiting. And I was like, what is this? And I'm like, it was one of those times where I, I, and I couldn't, I didn't. Like it was just LP, like like a record, and so I when I got home, I had to I had to go on the Google machine and go to the current and be like, okay, what did you just play? Like, because my my little info thing is is glitching because I don't know what this not not that I I'm not good at finding new music. I'm tending to go and look and find like, okay, what have I missed? What did I miss back in the day or what am I missing now? And it's hard to find. And so when when I do find something or when I hear it and it makes like the hairs on, on my arms or the back of my neck stand up, I'm like, okay, I gotta I gotta push into this. I gotta lean into this hard. And we've been listening like on shuffle, on repeat, all of her albums from like I don't even know. Like how I mean There's what, five 20, albums? Yeah, like, and from like twenty sixteen or something. Yeah. It's like how do how do we not know about people like that anyway? Well, and and she's a prolific songwriter and has written songs for lots of different artists that yeah. we probably know the songs. Right. Um, just didn't know she wrote them. Just didn't know she wrote right? them. Yeah. So I, I'm always fascinated by people that can just hear the music like John Batiste or LP, because even as a musician, I can play music, but I can't hear it to create. Does that make sense? Uh, you don't have like, like perfect pitch. No. Is that what you mean? Mm-mm. No. No, I don't hear... I don't hear melodies in my head where I feel like as mu- musicians that do composition, they can hear the melody. They can hear what the piece sounds like. You play what is written yes. versus writing. Correct. Yeah. And that's something that we've come up across where I'm like, hey, just, you know, come play this chord progression. And you're like, I don't know how. I'm like, well, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to have to like notate it for you <laughs> if I want that to happen. We'll work on it. But that's what you came from. You came from playing what's on the sheet, the sheet music. And then right? making it musical. And then, yeah, and, and working towards it. That's part of the process. Whereas I came from, I'm hearing this, what are the notes 
And then I'm going to play those notes the way I hear it or the way I want it to be heard a, a, a little bit. So it's just low, cause guitar versus piano, right? Like, and I, I get that anyway. No, I, I mean, I was always, I always wanted to be able to play by ear, even though I could pretty much play. I can't play by ear, by the way, very well. But I, I just want to make that clear. I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, you can't play by ear, Laura. It's like, no, I can't. Your mom can. Your mom mm-hmm. has perfect pitch. Oh, yeah. And, and she can kind of. I'm so jealous. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that was always a fun thing where you just go and play a note on the piano. I just, like, hey, mom, what am I playing? E flat. Well, and like I'll walk by and I'll be like, <laughs> I'll I'll play a note and I think I'm being f- smart and like I'll pick like F sharp and <laughs> she's like F sharp. I'm like, dang it! Like, <laughs> like, I, like so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so jealous. Can I do an experiment? Yeah. So something that I like to do is I love quotes and affirmation cards and things like that. I think you know that about me. Yeah. I have various boxes of different quote cards, quotes from famous people or affirmation statements. And so I like to just randomly pick one and read the quote and talk about why I needed this message today. So I have a box Mm -hmm. of 200 different quotes, and I thought maybe each of us could pull one Read the quote that we first, and there's quotes on both sides. Read the quote and talk about why we needed to hear that today. Okay. That sound good? Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Doesn't matter. Okay. Here's the box. You pick one. So I just do the one I'm facing or? Whichever one you saw first. Oh, this one. So this is, can I say who it's by first or not? Sure. Okay. So it says Thomas Edison. When you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this. You haven't. Mm. And so why do you need to hear that today, Keith? Probably because when I'm facing something new or challenging, I tend to not be able to see a way through. And I need to probably remember, or I need to remember, or it would behoove me to remember, that there are many possibilities or many answers to a question I may have or solutions to a problem that may be before me. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. Did I do one? Yeah. I hope I don't get a weird one. Me too. Okay. It is when you are really living in the present that you are living spiritually. Brenda Uland. So, okay. So I just got some shivers with that one because I think so often I, <laughs> we even started talking today, right? About. That's the, like kind of like the book you didn't ta- yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, it's about the book Energy Speaks a Little Bit connects directly to that. But then also <laughs> when we start talking today. I was just like, I could feel my energy being low. I could feel like my eyebrow permanently raised. Like, what are we even going to talk about today? (laughs) You're suspect. (laughs) Yeah, I had that that look on my face. Like when you're trying to give a toddler green beans, right? For the first time. And they're just like, really? Is this what you're going to have me eat? (laughs) Don't give kids green beans. It makes them gassy. That is true. That is true. And then they don't sleep well. This is a truth. But I think I... (laughs) I need to hear this today because I sometimes over index on what is the arc? Where am I going? What is the plan? How do we know if we're going to get there? How do we know when we're going to get there? If we have everything planned, then we can just wave at the, the milestones along the way, right? As we meet them. And so I have some, I, I have a hard time sometimes being present and being in the present because I'm looking at where are we going always. And so for me, It's really saying that if I want to truly be here, be present, that I need to focus on being, I'm trying to think of a different word for present, but trying to be in tune, tuned into the now. If you're really living in the present, wait, it's when you are really living in the present that you are living spiritually. Okay. Interesting. So it's so, it's so, so I don't, I don't see that in you. But see what you, how you, you're like, I don't, I'm not present, like, or I'm not living in the present, right? Like, is that fair mm-hmm. uh, well, <laughs> summation of what you just said? Or I, yes and no. I mean, I think when it comes to projects, I'm living in the present when I'm implementing, but so much of my thought process around the project is where are we going? What is the end? Project? Right. So I like, I don't think I'm 100% right on this, but my, 
initial reaction was like, oh, I didn't, I kind of guffawed in my, in my head, like, oh, I didn't really, like, I don't see you, you see yourself in certain ways and I see you in certain ways and they're not always, they don't always match. And my initial response was, I don't necessarily agree with what, or, or not that I don't agree with what you're saying, but it's like, oh, I don't think that's my, my lens of you. But then when I take a beat, I'm like, what? Why are you giggling so hard? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because earlier today I asked Keith, this is how we do. Um, <laughs> I asked Keith, I'm like, if you could be any Pokemon, what Pokemon would you be? Oh. Or like, if you were a Pokemon, which Pokemon would you be? And then you asked me and I, I was like, oh, well, I'd probably be Gardevoir or who was the other one I said? I don't oh, know. Um, Mistrevious. Like yeah. the the ghost with a little like really cute pink choker yeah, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. fancy hair. I'd be like Tangela, who's got like just all these wiry hairs around him and, and like whatever he evolves into. I don't even know what he evolves into. I was trying to look for like the is it trubbish? It's like trubbish. Just, just a garbage pile. I was I was being funny. I'm like, this is how I see myself, this is how I feel. And you're like, I'm a princess. <laughs> I have a gown. I have this cute outfit on. Da, da, da. Yeah. Stylish necklace. And it's good. It's 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 a healthier perspective to have, I think. So, <laughs> that was funny though. That was teasing you. But um, oh, wait, sorry. We have different you're saying that we sometimes have different uh, per- uh perceptions of each perceptions, other. Perceptions, yeah. Perceptions. And how we see ourselves. But but then I realized that what I thought was what I think of as you being present is also is actually in also your futuristic thinking and how you're a, a planner and and that that strength of yours of being able to to make a good plan is something that is very attractive to me because I do not like being part of a bad plan. And I show up probably present today because I know to get to where I want to go tomorrow. I need to do X, Y, and Z today. Right, and I don't, and I don't see that forethought. I, I all the time, not a lot. Some of the times I work with the the that thought process of uh, the strategy, but in like a lot of the times, the day to day, or or often, it's you've already thought about it. Same with like how I've I'll bring an idea to you sometimes, and you're like, oh, you've thought of this a lot, but this is the first time you're bringing it up, right? <laughs> and, but so my my initial reaction. My point is, I'm like, oh, I, I, you're you're saying something that's kind of contradictory to what I think, but actually, it's not. And and what I what I recognize in you a lot is that you're you're really good at thinking long term and uh, thinking ahead. I don't know why I felt like I had to say all that, but that so that was a good card for you, huh? I think so. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I just kind of dominated the conversation right there. Mm. No. Hmm. Cool. So we've also, this is like, this is like a, another version of like what we did with Feck Perfection. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think it's fun. I think it's helpful. And I think I even, in one of our posts that we did, part of like the little, little blurb about it was, a, a, I like, I like that. I like being able to open, open a book and just kind of say like, what's the universe have for me? Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of like what I wrote. Like, Hey, does anybody else ever do this? So that also makes me think like, you know, anybody listening, is it helpful <laughs> for us to, talk not only like about the books that like we're we're talking about but also like these little things like do you do do this like i'd like to think people are seeking out different ways to interpret or think about maybe what they're feeling or like what the universe has to tell them about something so go ahead i was gonna say i i think i do this a lot with pulling and i have this exact same deck on my desk at work what's the deck uh it's a target okay it's from Target. Oh, I thought that. I thought the first thing on the cover was maybe what it was called. No, it's just another. So I love. So it's I lo- a way to kind of display it. <laughs> this is what it should be called. Is this for this first card that's displaying? Is don't be afraid to be amazing, Andy Offutt Irwin. Like that should be like that should be on everyone's birth certificate, right? <laughs> like don't be afraid to be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love that. No, and I will say the thing that. That I started doing a couple of years. I've always liked quotes. I don't know why I I pull a lot of strength and courage from them. I just do. I mean, even um, so my first job right out of grad school, I liked quotes so much that I have um, the students that I worked with actually created a little plaque for me that has the quote that I had on the bottom of my email 
the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams, Eleanor Roosevelt. It was just so powerful for me because I had dreams. I knew where I wanted to go. I, I knew that this was the first step. You, thought know? you you thought you knew where you wanted to go. I thought I did. Yeah. I thought I did. But I, I think this is something that I continue to do. And so especially if I have a hard day or especially if I'm tired and you know how you show up at work sometimes or you show up and you wake up and you're like, oh, and not not because you don't love what you do or the people you work with, but you're just tired and you almost feel like it's Groundhog's Day where you're just showing up and you're repeating and having the same conversations and not making progress and your email is still well, from in my case, how many thousand deep, oh. right? Oh. <laughs> and so sometimes it's really helpful for me to shift my energy or my perspective and pull a card, read it, and put it in the front of this little window. So then that's what's on my desk for the day. It it just kind of, I don't want to say it jars me. What's another way to say that? It it invigorates. Invigorates. It kind of wakes me up. Inspiration. Does that make right? sense? Yeah. Yeah, where I feel like I'm not walking around anymore like a, a zombie worker, but I'm I'm, I'm yeah, more present. Yeah, it's a better it's a better launching point, right? Right. It's it's you're recalibrating, or you know, I don't know. I can. <laughs> so I mean, I would encourage folks that if this isn't something you do, and you find yourself getting in those energy lows at work, or lack of motivation, or just feeling like, oh, gosh, now what? For me, this has been something that's been incredibly helpful to reframe, shift my perspective, take just a few minutes for myself to breathe, read, reflect. And um, you can get these cards pretty much anywhere. I mean, Target, Amazon, they have some really fun ones on Amazon, Affirminators and things like that that have different quotes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have card decks that are Star Wars base that are, I mean, you name it, they have them. But I think just a fun little practice. Yeah. I like it. When you're thinking about, because I started talking about at the beginning, or, you know, when we're like, how do we pull this together? And so I started talking about all of these things are things that light us up. What we surround ourselves with is who we become. So can you think of a time when you were growing up or recently that you can confidently say this thing, this moment, this experience lit me up in a way that I didn't anticipate. And it created something in you to go for it. Does that make sense? Like go forward and create, go forward and be consistent with a practice. Hmm. Can you think of a time or an example um, a lot of new things are happening for me right now in, in the arena of developing a practice. I'm trying to show up for myself creatively and figure out what that means. And how do I, uh, each day, how how am I going to feel fulfilled in, in, in a couple different ways? Am I working on my physical health as well as my mental health as well as my creativity, right? So I've been I've been showing up and being fairly vulnerable and open and leaning into generosity and showing up not not just for myself but for others. And I'm not exactly sure how to show up for other people. And I think it's because I don't know exactly how to show up for myself. <laughs> and that's why I'm still talking about things like creating a practice for my creativity, creating a practice for myself. I think a big part of me is wondering why don't I have it figured out yet? And so I have shown up in, in, in spaces, uh, whether it's me commenting in someone's post or in a zoom call where I felt vulnerable. And I, I, I had like, while I was talking, I felt like I was oversharing and rambling and I'm not even sure where I started or why I started talking. Just even just like now, part of me is like, where am I going? What am I talking about? <laughs> uh, but I love how you show up. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, and it, it, I know, I know it's like, I can label it like it's the people pleaser in me or being afraid of, of being seen, but I also want to be seen and all these things, but is showing up in spite of that and giving myself the same amount of grace that I give others. That feels like 
it's happening more often. And so then things don't feel, (laughs) many things don't feel as heavy. So then I can recognize the things that do feel heavy and then I can address them more easily because it's, everything isn't so weighed down. So I'm starting to get a little bit of more of a focus and a little more clarity maybe. Uh, And I know there's, there's more work to be done to kind of hone, hone that stuff. But even, even with like releasing the podcast and being able to like write down, I am going to celebrate this win. I I don't generally let myself do that. (laughs) So leaning into the win of actually having published a podcast, I shipped the work. I shipped the creative work. I think it's a really powerful idea of surrounding ourselves with things that that we love in our life and not investing our time in things and people that just make us feel a little off or sad or frustrated or just meh. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think of like, if maybe you're not surrounded with the right people, maybe you feel stuck around people that you'd rather not be around. Right. And then the other thing, like, how do I protect the projects that I cherish and how do I give them the energy they deserve? Like this podcast, this has been my main creative focus for a couple months and we've only now begun to like show it publicly, but it's been months that we've been working at it, working on it, uh, struggling, persevering, pushing through setbacks maybe. And so to do that, you need to put up boundaries and protect the thing that you are are seeking to find or the thing that you found that you think you want to pursue. And then also, where do you get more of that input that's going to inspire you to keep going, even though you bump into resistance or obstacles, right? Right. So like, what what are you thinking? <laughs> You know, I think, yeah, I I will say that when I feel in the flow, I don't know how else to explain that, (laughs) but kind of in a flow, I feel like I'm more productive. I feel like I'm living what I meant to do. I'm most of the time waking up and really excited about what the day is going to bring. I I know that when I'm doing that, I'm focusing on relationships in my life that and investing time in those in conversations, in meeting for coffee, things like that, with those that create this positive presence in my life. But then I'm also doing a lot of reading. So um, I read a lot of nonfiction, and a lot of the books that I read put me in that place. And I often, when I'm reading, I'm also listening to music. And so often the music is also, I have playlists that I play when I'm journaling, when I'm going to go on a walk, when it's kind of chill time, I actually have some Apple playlists. I think that they've just created like the happy mix and the <laughs> like different things. I love it. I have one with like this um, cat that's just sitting there and it's like bopping along as it's like playing different music. And it's, I know it sounds that's silly. just like the cover art. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's the cover art. But the cat's not playing music, right? No, okay. that's not. Okay. But the cat's sitting there and it's just like its head, you know, and it just sits there. And I don't know why, but it just makes me happy to have this cat. You know, you've got like Taylor Swift and stuff playing and this cat's just like bouncing along, <laughs> like grooving, you know. I just think that can be really powerful to do that. When when you were young and growing up, did you find yourself surrounding yourself with things that, that lit you up? I mean... I had music on a lot. I always would ask for like a stereo for my birthday or, or Christmas because they were kind of not back to back, but close. So like if, if I wanted to pool my presents, it's like I could get a big stereo, like a three disc changer, you know? Ooh, that, that, that would have, that's a big deal. Well, but it also, in the day. it also came with the turntable. Also so, a big deal. So music, I, I mean, I mentioned this, like if you've listened to any of these podcasts, it's, it's music. I, I read comics as like an adolescent. Like, I learned a lot of words from reading comics, actually. I, I think that's lost on some people that might look down on that or used to. Like, now it's like graphic novels and ooh, and all <laughs> this, you know. It's got a little bit of a, a prestige to it, maybe, in, in some regards. But I read a lot. I did Lego here and there, you know. Like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, you know. You know, I, then I started learning how to play guitar, too. And I really surrounded myself. That was like another way to surround myself in music and at a, at a, at a different 
wavelength <laughs> sound wave. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. They're like, I, yeah, I surrounded myself with, with certain things. What else was to that? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm missing a point here. I mean, I, I think one thing that I think is interesting about the podcast right now is that you are finding community and people that are creating as well. When you were younger with music and comics, did you surround yourself with people that were also interested in that? Um, You know, in music, I have friends to this day that we're into music in similar ways, uh, like playing guitar and not into all of the same music, but some, some of the same, but like different and which is good because then it, we could, we could introduce each other to different types of things. And we still do today. And I cherish that. But to be honest, that's not something I actually realized, but like, I didn't have a lot of community as a kid. Yeah. I, I feel like I, and that's why I think I look for it so much now and why I, I'm, I'm really leaning into and appreciating the creative community I'm finding. Uh, and, and it's not just because in some people are into music and, and some people aren't, some people are podcasting and some aren't, it, it's not, that doesn't have to be the same things I'm into. It's just being around creative people. It's inspiring. It's, it, you can feel the energy. There's something about the creative process, no matter what the subject matter is, that pulls me in, and I and I like to witness. That was a whole lot. <laughs> I talked way too long. <laughs> you have to like write down your questions before I start, so we can remember then where we. Can, then you can say, "And Laura, what about you?" So yeah, Laura. <laughs> I don't remember uh, the question. You even. don't, as a kid, something. Were there things that lit you up? Okay. So so anyway, that that's a whole lot of me talking about that. But what about you? Like what what lit <laughs> you up as a kid? Uh well music. I mean, obviously, but I'd say music and then collecting things. So music, I remember we would um so I grew up playing piano since I was I would say three, but my grandma Iris taught me was really my first teacher. And then I took piano lessons all the way through high school and went to college for it. I think some of the times that I remember that really just made me happy and feeling like I was kind of in this flow and I was doing what I was meant to do, if that sounds really weird. No, no, no. no. Does that sound weird? No, keep going because then maybe I'll think of something. Um, I remember, so my mom also played piano. And so... I would often, so I'd, I'd, I'd have to practice, but I really love singing. And so sometimes we would just spend an evening, her playing the music and me singing the songs of Broadway shows or, you know, like Sleepless in Seattle theme song or, you know, <laughs> There's, I know that are there words, very, are there like, words to that? <laughs> I, I actually don't remember right now, but. <laughs> And so it's something where you know how you're just like time kind of stops and you remember those moments and those moments as being fulfilling and full of energy. And like I said, it's almost kind of like a time just kind of stopped. And the other thing that I can think of, and it just cement is cemented in my my head, and it's around music again, um, and kind of going back to that three disc CD player, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I remember... When I was probably, maybe it was high school, but it could have been, it must have been high school. I would clean my room. There's nothing better than like an organized, clean room. But after I cleaned my room and everything was in its place and everything was dusted and windexed and whatever had to happen, I would sit in my room. I would have a card table. I'd get a puzzle out. I'd puzzle. And then I would just jam to Weezer, Green Day, Stone Temple Pilots, Alanis Morissette, all those fantastic artists. But that's like another thing where it's just the world kind of stopped. And there was something that was just so fulfilling or f- it just filled my soul mm-hmm. um, with something that it needed at that moment. And I, I see them both connected because they're both tied to music. And I think music can be really powerful in that way. Feeding the soul. So when you were young like going back to little keith was there a record like one album 
that really spoke to you and co- you connected with that really had this positive pull for you? There's probably several. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like Metallica's Black Album hit in 91. So I, I mean, I was, <laughs> I was pretty young, but like my sister's a couple, few years older. So, but it hit, it hit hard and it was everywhere. It was on the radio. Like you listen to the radio back then. I had that on tape that hit hard. Um, and you felt it like in a positive way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That crunch, that, uh, those power chords. Yeah. Because I, I also grew up listening to like classic rock and like Led Zeppelin, like from my mom and Aerosmith and all these cl- called classic rock now, but you know, hard rock that also in my teenage years also got exposed to Elvis Costello. And I have somewhere, I have a tape of this year's model and that really hit hard and the subsequent like CDs and stuff. And yeah, I, I really, you know. Alice in Chains, I used to listen to their, it was called Tripod because it had a three-legged dog on it, but like, I think it was actually called Alice in Chains. I used to listen to that over and over, uh, and all their other stuff too, but yeah, I mean, I have like my favorites, I guess, and like pulled me like positively. How did you say that? Like, that's what I'm I'm trying to- Kind of fed your soul, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I like Metallica resonated with me so early and I went back. I went back, I got Injustice for All, I got Master of Puppets, I got Ride the Lightning, I got Kill Em All, and I just went to school on it and listened to it. And then I started learning guitar, acoustic guitar, and, and trying to f- trying to play that stuff on acoustic guitar, you know, and then uh, it, different things feed my soul in different ways. And that's, and so like when, I, like, even like when our, our oldest was asking us, the other night, you know, our top 20 bands are of all time. And then our top three, and then even like my top three is hard and picking, like picking one is hard because I tend to say it's Metallica and Elvis Costello. And I feel, I feel good with that because there's, it's, it's, it is such a juxtaposition and yet it's not to me because the way I feel music and the way I enjoy and interpret it yes it sounds different but not all of it does and both of them cover a pretty wide spectrum and and i know like elvis costello has is much more known for having like country albums and pop albums and kind of rocking albums and this and that album and with a a a four-string quartet and burt Bacharach and all you know a jazz album and you know with his with his wife diana crawl and then an alan toussaint with new orleans jazz and but then you go and you listen to some Metallica and like there's strings and it's, it's melodic and it's soft and it's a ballad and da da da. You know, I can dive into the nuance of those things, but then also I can let go of that nuance and I can just be like, I just want to rock. <laughs> I just want to bop my head or head bang or whatever. And then sometimes I'm like, I just want to be sitting in a, in a room and letting the sound wash over me and, and listen for every little, echo that was in the room that either artist recorded in or something so uh i mean that it i <laughs> we do like a live stream podcast of me just going through my old tapes or like liner notes or like think trying to think on that deeply but uh i i'm sure there's more too that i'm not even thinking about but like so i don't want to monopolize here i'm monopolizing like i shouldn't have asked you the no you shouldn't first. have so i'm monopolizing and we can we can come back to something but how about you obviously like, tell us a little bit. I think I have a, I have an idea of someone you're going to mention, but I want to hear, like, the same for you. Like, what are some of those artists? I kind of want to. Okay. I'll mention the the artists and then I'll see if you're right. So a couple of the, the artists that I, I would say. So my first record was Madonna, but I didn't listen to it that much. So maybe I think the... The music I listened to more was like the Carpenters. I really love the Carpenters. Simon and Garfunkel. Listen to Simon and Garfunkel quite a bit. I'm trying to think. And then, I mean, when it got to more, when I got a little older, it was the Weezer and the Green Day and Alanis Morissette and those. But but if I was thinking deep down, which which bands like really connected to me and kind of spoke to me and and lifted me up, I think it would be some of those. It would be 
the Carpenters. It would be, which I mean, honestly, if you listen to some of their lyrics, it's really sad. Uh-huh. There's there's one song like "I'm saying goodbye to love." <laughs> it's like whoa, that's okay. <laughs> it's really really dark. But like we've only just begun, and like they have some. <laughs> Okay. Right? Karen Carpenter was awesome. Um <laughs> so yeah. So I, I like kind of that like mm. 70s groove music. Bob Dylan. That's okay. I'm just I'm throwing it out there. Okay. What? Sound like you were com- what, what? you were lumping the Carpenters no, and Bob Dylan no, no, together. No, 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 no. And- I'm lumping the vibe. Oh. The Okay. Acoustic kind of vibe. What about when Dylan went electric? All right. You got me there. You got me there. <laughs> I thought you were going to go more, um, talk about like Alanis Morissette. Uh, and my guess is because when I think of what we're talking about, I'm thinking more of that, those years, early to mid nineties of young adulthood almost. And I would, I will say for like young adulthood, like say high school into college, Alanis Morissette, Jewel, Fiona Apple, and the Dixie Chicks. Those were like mm. my woman empowerment, like yeah. boom. Yeah. Okay. Love the chicks. Are there, um, sorry, do you have more to say about music? I always have more to say so, about music. Okay. But I just going. thought I was thinking of something as you're talking through all the different artists that resonate with you growing up. And one thing that I think is an art, perhaps. I'm going to call it an art and a creative practice that I don't know if our kids will necessarily ever understand or know about, but was the creation of the mixtape. Yeah. And so I remember, and I bet a lot of people listening to this do, and if if you don't, mm. that's okay. <laughs> Bear with us. But growing up, we, my sister and I and my mom, we had a craft sale that we were at once a year. My mom rose mauled. And then my sister and I every year had something that we were doing, whether it was candles or magnets or pine cones were always must fire starters. So we would dip pine cones in the garage and they would be cinnamon, vanilla, or pine flavored. And they'd have colored pine cones with wax on them. And we'd get the pine cones from the woods. And anyway, it was a lot of fun. And so we would spend our weekends dipping pine cones ready for the craft sale. So we'd have hundreds of these to sell. Anyway, I remember we would be in the garage. It would be about this time of year when we would start, well, probably October. And it would be kind of chilly, but it was great because there were these huge, big stock pots full of wax, the scented wax. And we'd have the radio on and we'd have a tape in the tape deck on the radio, like the boombox thing. And a song would start coming on and, you know, the the sound of the DJ that would be like, and now mm-hmm. from Sugar Ray, we're going to play <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't, I don't even, I don't think that they were a thing back when we not were dipping then. pine no, cones. No, not back then. I can't even think of what it would have been, but we'd be like, oh my gosh, and our red hot chili peppers. How about that? And now the red hot chili pepper is going to play blah, blah, blah. And we'd be like, ah, and we, one of us would run over and press record on the tape deck so we could get it on our mixed tape. And I know you could be a little bit more detailed and planned with your mixed tapes, but that's what I remember um, is sitting in the garage, dipping pine cones for the craft sale. I was coming up in a month and making this mixed tape as we we're creating crafts. And I know that you've made mixed tapes because that was one of the first things you gave me was a mixed tape. <laughs> really? I want to find that actually. Yeah. I mean, that's something I grew up with was m- making tapes for people to like share like, Ooh, you got to check this out. And yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had, so my first, my first, like, so recording off of the radio. Yeah. Do you remember doing that? Yeah. You just made me remember, uh, my, f- my first time I ever did that. I, I had to have been under seven. Under seven? Yeah. And oh my goodness. I had a, a Peter Pan audio tape for the book. <laughs> Sure. It was like bright yellow. And I, 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 so my mom would record records onto cassettes because you could take the cassette in the car. And so I learned from her, from watching her and seeing what she was doing was that if you put tape over the end of a tape cassette, you covered up like these little dimples that it was supposed like you'd break these little tabs off so that you couldn't record over something. But like, if you got a tape from like a company, like the actual record, they wouldn't have them. So, but if you put scotch tape over that, you could record over. Oh, really? Yeah. So. 
Oh, I had no idea. So I did that on my Peter Pan tape. Of course you did. <laughs> and, like, none of this Peter Pan reading to me stuff. Yeah, and, I want music. And I want so a jam. I recorded <laughs> Great White's Once Bitten, Twice Shy. And it has the most like- How old were you? I was, I, we lived in- Six, seven? I was five, six or so. Oh, geez. I was young. And I mean, that tape's long gone. I've never, I've never seen it sense but it had like the most jazzy blues rock and billy like piano to it and i just it just like tickled my fancy and like it came on and i had to record it and so so that's what i just thought of but yeah what what else were you trying to what were you going to talk about no we're talking about mixed just, tapes but i was just talking about the the act of creating it Right. Yeah. And music. And again, I think it aligns with the things that light you up or you're excited about. You're like, oh, like you said, DJ's coming. Ah, gotta get it. You're yeah. right. They always talked over the intro. The and you're like, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. It was a way to communicate something special. Like, hey, you need to listen to this. I mean, because when it wasn't off the radio, when it was like, I'm recording a CD onto a tape or, you know, that was, you know, middle school, high school and stuff. But like, or a tape to a tape, like you could pick which song and then you had to plan because you only had so much length, you know, and then even with CDs, like you only had 66 minutes or 63 minutes for a while, you know, and there was an art to it. How do you use the most you got? And anyway. Kind of want to find the mixtape you made me. Was it actually a tape? It was a tape. It was a cassette tape. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I was late to the technology, I think a little. There's also something nostalgic about it. Yeah, probably. I mean, probably what I had. And yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with like it was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that stuff, and I know we're we're rambling, but I can I can think of a few times. Uh, well, one recent, but a couple that s- stick with me still of when I heard a sound like music, a musical sound, and it stopped me in my tracks, and I stopped whatever it was that I was doing, and I went towards it, and I turned it up or leaned in to hear better. Uh, do you have any of those instances or do you need a little time to think while I talk about the ones that I thought of? Um, well, I, I'll, let me give you one yeah. example Yeah, because it's more recent. One of the examples is LP. Her song, uh, Golden is one that it's interesting because it starts and the guitar at the beginning, and then it kind of gets into this. Dun, 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 dun. It it gets into this groove. It's like Spanish, like almost Spanish guitar, right? Yeah, at the beginning. Dun, 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 dun. Yep, and the same yeah. thing in her song "Goodbye." There's like this. Sorry, <laughs> do, please cut that out. That was terrible. <laughs> so there's a part <laughs> where um, in her song "Goodbye" that has this like. I don't know what it is, if it's a synth or what, but it also gets like, it's just this groove. And so I will say I've listened to those two songs over and over and over because of the uniqueness of the vibe of them and the sound. How about you? LP is the most recent artist that caught my attention so much that I had to figure out what that song was. Yeah. And that was uh, One Like You. It was playing on the radio. Yep. Really good song. And it's got like, like distorted something. I don't even know if, I mean, it might be guitar, but I don't know at the beginning, but I didn't, I didn't even hear the beginning of the song until I got home. But like I, in the middle of the song on the radio, on my way driving home, I heard that song and I was like, what is this? This is great. So that's recent, but I remember two others and it was us watching the movie once the very beginning. It's got Mm, Glenn Hansard. Yeah. That's and Mar- Marquette Irglova. The beginning is Glenn Hansard busking at night, and he's playing a uh, of acoustic version of "Say It to Me Now," mm. and it's like the first scene. He's an amazing artist, too. Yeah, and I got goosebumps, and I was just like, "What is this?" Like, I, I'm just like, "How did I, who who is this?" I, and I, I think I went like after the movie. I'm like. I got to Google whoever this is and and been in love ever since. And that was one of those moments later in life that really lit me up and turned me on to a musician and musicians that I, I hadn't known and I had missed the one a little, little after that was we were doing, I think we were cooking in the kitchen or something and we had the TV on. It must've been like over the air or when we had satellite or something. 
but there was a commercial on. Like we don't we don't watch much with commercials now. We we wait That's and rare. we or we yeah. watch shows, right? We are like something on Showtime or HBO or you know. We, uh, there's like just nothing on that we need to watch now. Like we can watch it later or whenever. Not it's not a, like a judgment thing or anything. It's just it's just what it is. But this is back in the time of like oh commercials on, and it was a, a trailer for a movie, and it was uh everything must go with Nick Offerman. I made I made you watch it. I, I swear I made you watch that movie. It's where he owns a record store and his daughter oh, and she's yeah. going to college and stuff. And Sorry, so. that everything must yep. go. That's not the movie title. What's the movie title? Isn't that? Oh, Hearts Beat Loud. Loud. Hearts Beat Loud. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, so yeah. So also I'll really see. Good. Everything Must Go is uh, one of the tracks that I think that might actually be the, it's, it's the last track on the soundtrack. But there was a clip in the trailer, and it's Nick Offerman playing, and it's just this echoey, delayed guitar riff. And I literally like did the like like it was like if you could hear my head in my head, you would it would be like the record scratch, like. (laughs) And I like I just like looked up and I turned and I just walked over to the TV and I just turned it up as loud as possible. And I I mean, it was like a I think it's like an indie film, you know. And I, Mm -hmm. I mean, I bought it. I bought. Like yeah. the the iTunes version of it or whatever, and 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 watched it, and like I have I bought the soundtrack, and uh, it's Keegan Dewitt is is the the musician that did I think ninety seven percent of the soundtrack. It's it's amazing, and Nick Offerman sings on some of the things, and but I was just like, what is this amazing sound? And I I know I've I've I, I mean I know there's more, but there's just something so interesting and fun about little moments like that, where like the LP like. I can't, I can't believe I found it and I'm so happy I did. And then the same with like randomly hearing somebody trying to market their movie and I heard the song and that's the reason that that's the only reason I turned my head is because I heard the music and it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting to me and it's, you you made me think, think of that. And I was just wondering if you had more or any other instances. I thought of another one tied to movies. So there's this movie and I have no idea what it is or all I, I don't even know who's in it, (laughs) but it was a movie about Ernest Hemingway. And again, I have no idea, but it, it was like now times, but it was back when he was a lot anyway, but there's a song in there that's Michael Franti and Spearhead and But it was one of those things I'm like, oh, I like this because it's kind of it's got this um, just really positive kind of I'm going to say the wrong type of vibe, but just like very like lighthearted, happy, got a good groovy. And so I've been the last year, actually, I've been listening to a lot of his stuff. Um, He's got some really fun videos on iTunes and um, or Apple Music. iTunes is old. Oh, my (laughs) word. But. He's another person that I really appreciate just his vibe and how he shows up in the positive feel that his music invokes in me. So if I'm feeling, if I'm ever feeling down or stressed or worried about something, I often will put him on and just sing along. So today was, for me, it was actually a lot of fun because we were able to talk about things that don't necessarily prevent us from being creative or get in our way, but rather from the positive side of it. Things that help lift us up, help us keep going, help feed our souls, for lack of a better way of saying that. And it was a lot of fun taking a trip down memory lane with you and talking about some of our favorites from growing up and being a little nostalgic about that. Any closing thoughts from you? It's fun to look back and and think about the things that I leaned into creatively and look at some of the new things that helped me lean into being creative and the different mediums that we, we look to, to kind of inspire us and to, to kind of move us along and, and lift us up. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to be listening to some good music tomorrow on my commute. There, there you go. Sounds good. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.